All righty. Let's get started. My name is Maddie Wonder. I work in the admissions office at Gettysburg College. I'm a senior assistant director of admission and also a member of Gettysburg College class of 2017. Go Bullets. Um, and congratulations to you all, class of 2026, um, for your acceptance to Gettysburg College. Um, some of you have already committed to Gettysburg College, and that is fantastic. Um, for the rest of you, we hope to see you here in the fall as well. Um, so we're really excited um, to congratulate you and welcome you. Uh, now tonight, you are joining a panel of really awesome faculty from Gettysburg College um, that's gonna chat about our first year seminar program specifically. Um, so, Again, um, we are taking questions throughout this whole program. Um, we are using the Q&A feature in this Zoom, um, and this is being recorded just for your information. Um, so throughout the entirety of the program, please put your questions in the Q&A for us, and we'll get to them um, as soon as we can or follow up with you after this program. Um, in just a moment, I'm going to turn it over to Ian Isherwood, the director of the program. Um, but first, I would just like to note for those students who have already committed to Gettysburg and made their enrollment deposit, um, you will find in your applicant portal um, that tonight after this program, you are able to start selecting your top five choices for your first year seminar uh, for this fall. Um, and those of you who eventually do deposit, you will be able to do that immediately in your portal as well. Um, and then things in May will shift to um, your first year dashboard. So if you don't get a chance uh, by May 1st to make those selections, you will still have time. No worries about that. All right, at this time, I'll hand it over to Ian and the rest of the panelists to introduce themselves. Hello all, and to echo Maddie, uh, welcome and congratulations on being accepted to Gettysburg College. Uh, my name is Ian Isherwood. I direct the first year seminar program, and I'm a professor who teaches in the interdisciplinary studies program and within the history department. Um, 26 years ago, I was in your shoes as a newly accepted Gettysburg College student, um, contemplating uh, what my future was going to be. And I distinctly remember the anticipation I had about what college would be like and what a college classroom was like. So I hope if you have questions about uh, that topic, if you have questions about the academic side of things, or if you have questions just about the first year experience, you should feel comfortable in asking those uh, within, within the Q&A, and I could see some of you are already doing so. Um, I've taught three seminars at Gettysburg College. I've taught one on war writing that's called The Soldier's Tale. I've taught uh, one on J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis and their works called Through the Wardrobe. And I've taught one uh, on George Orwell's life and his works. Um, so I've taught three seminars over the course of the last decade or so uh, and have been an enthusiastic participant within the first year seminar program um, and have really enjoyed being a teacher in it. Uh, what we'd like to do is to go around the room and to have my esteemed colleagues be able to introduce themselves and to introduce their seminars that they have taught um, and uh, and say a little bit about uh, their own courses. So we'll begin with Monica. All right, hi everyone. And um, I will follow with the warm welcome and congrats. It's wonderful to be here and I'm really glad, even though we can't see you, I am glad that you're all here. Um, I am a, a professor of environmental studies and my area within that is on um, on conservation, wildlife conservation, and I work on um, gender and development issues. And uh, issue very close to my heart is the issue of human wildlife conflict, which is what I do my research on. Um, so my first year seminar is kind of the dream course that brings all my love of animals and uh, questions about the human animal relationship under one umbrella. It's called Encountering Animals, and it is an interdisciplinary approach to the study of the human, non-human animal relationship. Um, it's a lot of fun. We have a really great time taking field trips, doing research, asking each other questions, um, and uh, learning about what it means to live 
peacefully and sometimes in conflict with other species, um, which I think really helps us to think critically about how to live more peacefully with members of our own species. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, but that's my first year seminar, Encountering Animals. All right, thank you, Monica. Uh, Dave. Let me get unmuted here. Hi, everybody. My name is Dave Powell. I am an associate professor in the education department and actually started my career as a high school social studies and history teacher. Uh, most of what I do here is focused on education, teaching about uh, the K-12 system, education policy, and things like that. I also am teaching a class this semester on higher education, which has been a lot of fun. But my first year seminar has nothing to do with any of those things, at least not on the surface. My, my course is called This Machine Kills Fascists, Protest Music and Social Change in the American Experience. And uh, the, the title, actually the first half of that title, comes, as some of you may know, from an inscription that Woody Guthrie, the great folk singer, put on his guitar when he was fighting for America in the Merchant Marine in World War II. So we use that really, and we use his life and his experience as a jumping off point for trying to understand how social change happens in American life and culture. We spend a lot of time first talking about the legacies of slavery and Jim Crow in the early 20th century and how that helped to sort of beget the blues, which of course evolves into rock and roll and to some other forms, R&B and other forms of music as well. Then we move into the period of the civil rights movement, talk a lot about the music that was part of that movement and, and how there sort of becomes a split in the 1960s between the civil rights movement and in the movement against the war in Vietnam. So we spent a lot of time listening to that music. I have students tell me every year, I'm so glad I took this class because now I understand my dad's music or my mom's music better than I did before. So that's one of the benefits, I think, of being in the course. We also do field trips, like Monica mentioned. Uh, we will sometimes bring artists to campus to perform for us. Uh, we also will go places occasionally, if necessary, to see an artist and, and to meet them and talk about their work. So that gives you a, a broad overview. The, the course really is about history and social movements and things like that. It's a lot of fun to teach, and I look forward to uh, maybe answering any questions that you might have about it later. Joanne, I think you're up next. Thanks, Dave. Um, I'm Joanne Myers. Uh, I teach in the English department. I want to echo my colleagues in saying it's good to meet you virtually, um, and congratulations on your admission to Gettysburg. We're excited to get to see you in the autumn. Uh, my day job as an English professor is teaching 18th century British literature, at which point most people pause and get a faintly panicky expression on their face, like what might possibly have been published in the 1700s. But my first year seminar lets me read things published after the 1700s. So I teach a first year seminar called Writing the American Dream, Immigrant Stories. And it takes the story of the American dream um, that we're familiar with as a kind of narrative. I have to say that Americans tend to tell themselves about what it means to come to this country. And it kind of flips the script and asks what immigrants say about coming to America. So we read a lot of first person narratives about how people have made sense of, um, of the act of immigration and how it changed their lives. We also look, there's a kind of historical context Industrialization. So we spent some time thinking about the narratives right from the colonial period that shaped how immigration has been understood in America, um, both as a story of mixing and a story of welcome of different peoples, and also a kind of competing narrative of America as a country for a certain sort of person. And we also look at how that plays out in the way that immigration gets talked about in the news today. Um, so uh, my first year seminar, uh, we can talk about these things more if people have questions about it, but my first year seminar both meets the first year writing requirement. I know many people tend to have questions at this point about how seminars interact with the Gettysburg curriculum. And my seminar is also paired often when I teach it with a seminar um, offered by my colleague, Kathy Kane from the psychology department, who teaches a course on the psychology of immigration. So I can speak to some of those intersections. Um, we do fun things like we go to the Statue of Liberty and, um, and Ellis Island and kind of visit those kind of iconic spaces of the American dream and, and see how those spaces might've looked to people then and now. 
Um, so I can say more if and as needed, but as I say, it's good to meet you and good to be here this evening. All right, thank you all. Um, what I'd like to do now is introduce you to what a first year seminar is and how it fits within our curriculum at Gettysburg College. Um, so the first year seminar is an important part of the incoming student experience here. Uh, all incoming first year students sign up for first year seminar. All first year seminars meet uh, one of our core curricular requirements. Um, you've probably seen a little bit about those. They're listed on our website, but all first year seminars are required to meet one of those in addition to meeting the first year seminar requirement, which is part of the curriculum. Uh, when you come into Gettysburg College, your first year seminar will be one of four courses that you will sign up for in your first semester. Uh, you will work with your advisees. Uh, you'll work with your advisor here at the college. Um, could, uh, Maddie, can you help me out? For some reason, I lost you guys um, on my screen. Or can somebody just tell me if you're still there? Yep, we're all still here. Good. Uh, it seems to be on my end, but you can see me and everything, right? Yes. Okay, good. So, um, okay, so the first year seminar is an important part of student experience. It's one of four courses you'll sign up for in your first semester. And so you'll work with your academic advisor here to build a schedule. Um, some of you will be involved in summer advising and which you'll work with a summer, advisee, uh, to, a summer advisor to do that. Um, and then at the start of the semester, you'll be assigned a faculty academic advisor who might be your first year seminar instructor. And often that is the case. And you will meet with your uh, advisor at the very beginning of the year and go over your first year seminar, but then the other courses in which you have chosen to take in your first semester. Now this year we have 44 different first year seminars to choose from, those you've seen within the, uh, the booklet in which you've already gotten. And you'll notice that the sheer variety of seminars offered this year spans across our curriculum. So students have an opportunity to follow a subject which they are hopefully passionate about under a faculty member who shares in their enthusiasm. And from our side of the desk, faculty often create seminars on a subject that they hold a particular passion for. It could be something of long-term personal interest. It could be an aspect of scholarship they've always wanted to explore, but maybe haven't yet. Or it can be a subject that they think that you might need to know something about. And our first year seminars tend to fit a, a number of different kind of categories. But I think the key thing is that the instructors are really excited to be able to, to teach these unique courses. Um, now, you'll choose your first year seminar. Um, and Maddie's kind of given you kind of one step of it, which is through the first year dashboard. Um, beyond that, then the data in which you have entered for the first year dashboard will then be transferred over into our, our college course selection software this summer. And it'll then be run into an algorithm um, that helps ensure that you will get one of the top seminars on your list. And in the last couple years, uh, over half of our incoming students have gotten their first choice and the vast majority of remaining students have gotten their second choice. So the algorithm is set up so that you will get your first, second, and then a few students will get their third choices. But the key thing is that we wanna place as many students as possible within their first and second choices. So what is a first year seminar? Uh, each is different in terms of their, con uh, their content and how the professor will conduct the class. But I'd say the foundational aspect of first year seminars is a small class setting that is meant to foster dialogue. Uh, the maximum number of students in a first year seminar is 16. Many seminars have a cohort of around 10 to 12 students. So through that small class setting, a first year seminar is really an introduction to the overall liberal arts classroom. We want you right from the start to be an engaged learner, to develop new critical thinking skills, to develop your time management, to learn to focus your intellectual energy deeply on a subject, to learn a bit better how to research and to write and to gain additional confidence in your academic abilities in your first semester. Um, uh, the first year seminar, I think beyond anything else, is an introduction to academic life at a liberal arts college. Sometimes I refer to it as learning how to college, um, learning how to learn in college. 
Um, beyond that, the first year seminar, I think, is also a means to form a cohort with your new classmates. Uh, most students either end up living on the same floor uh, or in the same dorm as other students uh, in your seminar. And as such, you will form bonds as a cohort. This helps to some degree with your college adjustment. Um, in addition to this, your seminar is an introduction to the academic side of our college life. It's an introduction to the residential liberal arts environment. Um, and our dedicated faculty, I think, take both of these responsibilities very seriously. We want you to grow and adjust well in your first semester um, in terms of your academics. But we also want you to grow and adjust as a person, uh, setting you up well here for not just your first year, but setting you up well for the years beyond. And I'd say my favorite part of teaching a first year seminar is helping students navigate that new environment and setting you all up as much as any of us can for success here. Um, so we have a number of questions that have been coming in. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, Maddie, if you don't mind, try to figure out what's kind of going on with my screen at the moment. Uh, and then uh, we can start answering some of these. So let me just pick a question and see if one of my colleagues would be interested in. Yeah, I'm happy to help too. Um... So, and it happened, I think, when I, when I stopped the screen share, if that helps at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but the first question, one I see coming in is, how should students approach choosing their first year seminar? Should they choose something based on the major they think um, they're going to try at Gettysburg or just based on personal interests? Would anyone like to take that? I'll sure. say something to that. Um, I think like with most things in life, it's a mix. I think all of us think you should be guided mostly by your intellectual curiosity and kind of the ideas that grab you and strike you as something you want to spend the next 14 weeks thinking carefully about with a, with a group of your peers. Um, in technical terms, you should know that each seminar meets, this was said before, but it bears repeating, each seminar meets a curricular requirement. So each seminar is in some sense helping you move through the Gettysburg curriculum, even if it's not um, closely related to your potential major or majors, it is doing something to help you kind of um, progress in your education. And I can't say this enough is that your advisor, either your summer advisor or the advisor you're given in the fall will help you figure out all the pieces of how to move forward effectively. That's really our job. And we all want you to take the time to explore what you're most interested in. And there will be time to think about all the requirements and how they fit together. But the first year seminar is really a unique and a special place to, to do something that you're curious about and interested in. And just, I just wanna echo Ian in saying to learn how to learn in this new environment. And I'll let other people chime in too. I'll, I'll just chime in to say that um... I can't speak for all departments, but I know that in our department, environmental studies, and I'm, I'm sure others, the first year seminar is often counted or can be counted as an elective course, depending on how the major is structured, if it's offered by someone in the department. So for example, there are three in environmental studies that are offered pretty frequently. And because there are topics that are as, as um, Professor Isherwood mentioned, kind of close to our heart and not necessarily what we do our research on all the time or what our regular classes are about. Um, still, there are intersections with our discipline that I think are useful. And so um, sometimes you can in incorporate those into the major, but they're by design not supposed to be entry to the major. Um, we have other courses for that. So I would say think of it like a bonus if it counts for your major, but it doesn't necessarily need to count or be in that area. I think we really, as, as you heard, want to encourage students to explore and stretch. So I would just add that. Uh, let me follow up on that because we, we have two questions about uh, that idea um, and the idea of kind of planning ahead for what your potential major is going to be. So we have one question that is, is it more beneficial to take a seminar that's different from your major? And then another question that is, if one chooses a first year seminar that does not align with their desired major, does that affect any planning for that major? 
since the advisor selection is affected by which first year seminar is chosen. So would anyone like to take a, take a stab at that? Okay. I will, let me unmute myself again. Um, I, yeah, I would say first on, on the first question, um, selfishly as a professor, one of the things that I love the most about teaching this seminar is that it allows me to teach students that I otherwise would probably never see never have an opportunity to teach while they're here. So I have students who go on to become majors in biology, health sciences, math, uh, other programs and, and majors, computer science, things that I that probably would, would not put them in my orbit as a professor while they're here. And, and I, I guess what I would say too, is that I try to make sure that that class is one that is comfortable for them and that they're excited to be in. I get a lot of students who love history. That's the reason why they sign up for the course. I get a lot of other students who think, I hope this is the only history class I ever have to take while I'm at Gettysburg College. And that's okay too. It's not totally okay. Sorry, Ian, I want them to take your classes, but it's mostly okay. So I think that's good. As far as the other question goes about setting up for the major, um, I, I think really this is a question about the role of the first year advisor. And I can just say quickly as a, as a first year advisor, I see it as my job to help you figure out what you wanna do. So if you know when you get here that you're interested in becoming a major in a specific field or department, my job is to make some contact with that department if I need to, or to put you in contact with people that'll help you understand what those other courses are that you're taking and how those might help to you know, move you toward that, that goal of establishing that major. Remember, this is just one of four courses that you're gonna take in your fall semester and then four more in the spring. So you'll have lots of opportunities to explore your major and to, and to do that kind of work. The, the one quick sort of um, uh, last thing I'll say on this is th the first year advisor, I always say to my students, I'm your advisor for life now, if you want me to be. Like, uh, like I may not formally be your advisor and I won't be anymore after you declare your major, but you can still come and talk to me anytime you want to. Once you do declare that major, you're going to get a new advisor in your major department, and that person is really going to be responsible for making sure that you're able to get the classes that you need and the order that you need to take them in and meet all the requirements of the major. So I think those things are the things that I would emphasize. I don't know if anybody else wants to, wants to add anything to that. Monica, go ahead. Um, I'll just piggyback on that to say that um, one of the things that I always tell my first year seminar students is six of them will be my advisees most likely, um, but the rest of them are kind of de facto advisees. Like right. I am always, I, I feel like the kind of community that we set up there and the way a lot of us approach our first year seminars, which is to say, they're really special. It's it's a it's not just a 100 level course, and there's a lot of stuff going on in there. Um, so I always tell my students that I'm happy to facilitate information gathering or help in a way if I can. And similarly, in my 100 level courses, intro courses that students are taking, um, and they have questions about my department, they're not my advisees, but I'd be happy to answer those questions, and I work with them as they are thinking about, like maybe a first year student is thinking, I'm pretty sure I wanna major in this, but I don't wanna decide yet, but I work with them as if they are going to. And so I think we definitely take a community approach to advising too. It's not just that whoever's your person on paper is the only person you can talk to. You'll, you'll have eight instructors in your first year that you can make contact with and get support from in addition to lots of other people too, of course, so. So I just want to uh, address um, a couple questions, uh, and uh, one of them. So Joanne, uh, would you mind just talking a little bit about the writing requirement? Sure. Um, so my first year seminar and almost all first year seminars of English department faculty meet the first year writing requirement. Um, all full time faculty in the department teach first year writing every year. However. Um, First year writing is not the only way to meet the first year writing requirements. Some students will receive AP credit, um, which will exempt them from the first year writing requirement, although many do still benefit from taking a first year writing um, course in the first year. And I can say more about that if it's interesting to people. Um, but there will also be both semesters, both fall and spring, 100 level English courses, either English 101, 111, or 113 
that meet the first year writing requirements. So many students take my first year seminar to fulfill that requirement. Some take it having exempted out of writing, but wanting more practice in writing and or being interested in the subject matter, um, but there are other paths to fulfill the writing requirement. Um, but I would say that seminars that meet the writing requirement um, to kind of build on what has been said by other panelists kind of help students think about learning how to write or becoming more proficient writers at the college level, how to work through a writing process, how to draft works, um, even just how to read and analyze um, texts with an eye to writing about them. And then, as I say, working through a draft process, revising your writing, getting feedback, responding to that feedback. Um, so all first year seminars that meet the writing requirement will do that, but so will our 100 level writing courses. I don't know if that hits all the points you wanted to hit, Ian. Um, Monica, we have several questions here. Uh, we have a couple questions about if they're similar seminars to Encountering Animals. Um, it seems like people want to take your seminar. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> um, so uh, that's probably a question for you, since you have the master list of all the seminars. I am aware that there's somebody in psychology, I think, who has a course but the title is Puppies! Exclamation um, point. I don't remember what the subtitle of it, but... Uh, I think that's Trace Lambert. I'm not sure, but somebody else also saying, really yeah. loves dogs. We talk about dogs in my class yeah. a lot, but not exclusively. <laughs> um, um, in my department, um, uh, the first year seminars uh, do not, der I'm trying to think. Um, well, there's, uh, yeah, other, sorry. Um, I don't know of any other course that really does what, what we do in that course, other than the puppies class. Um, and I don't actually know too much about what goes on there, um, to be honest, but um, yeah, that, I'm glad that there's interest and uh, would look forward to seeing anyone who can come join us. Yeah, that course, uh, the puppies course, unfortunately, is not offered, but there are lots of puppies on campus. So <laughs> yeah. a lot of people walk their dogs and we have dog days and things like that, um, including including my dog. Um, we, we did have a question about... Um, what courses a person should sign up for if they're interested in ecology. Um, and uh, and I, just looking at the list, I see that we have two courses in your department, Monica. We have... Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Right, so um, the Smoky class, there's a, a course on public lands taught by Randy Wilson. Um, and the title of the course, I think, is something like, what would Smoky do? Um, so we kind of... I'm not the instructor of that course, so I'm not sure exactly how Smokey fits in, um, but it's a public lands course, uh, national parks and, wild, and wildlands management. Um, and I think there's a pretty good wildlife section in there. Um, there, the food class, our other first year seminar that's happening in the department next semester will be, um, that's about food policy and food and agriculture. Um, but we do do a lot of ecology on campus. I mean, in other departments in environmental studies and biology, um, we have a lot of faculty working on ecology. And there are quite a few of us who work on issues of wildlife conservation and you know, nature conservation more generally from a variety of perspectives, not just ecological. Um, so there's, I'm happy to field questions too. If anyone wants to follow up with me by email, I can drop my address in the chat and I'm happy to um, answer questions one-on-one -on -one if someone has something specific about that. My colleague, Stephanie Sobel, teaches a course on the literature of environmental, of climate change too, and sort of environmental catastrophe. So there's that kind of option as well. Um, we have a couple questions that are logistical that I can, that I think I can answer uh, relatively quickly and it would probably behoove us for, for, for me to answer them rather than typing an answer. Um, one question is how do we know if a class meets a particular requirement? Um, and that you can, you can find that information both, there's, there's a list on the college website that tells you the courses fulfilling the curriculum, Maddie's put that in, uh, in the chat. Um, but then when you are a student, you will then have access to be able to search within the um, 
student center to which is our computer program where you search for courses and things like that you actually be able to search according to academic requirement so you can search all of the classes that meet that particular requirement um, so if you need something that meets the, the first year writing requirement you can look for it there if you need something that meets the conceptualizing diversity credit you can you you can find it you can find it through that but they're also listed on the colleges the college's website as well um, so in there have been a couple questions about housing and about how first year seminars work within kind of residential buildings. So our dorms have more than one first year seminar in them. They typically have multiple first year seminars and the seminars, so let's say three uh, that'll be housed in one particular dorm, three or four. Um, and those seminars uh, usually are not on the same floor. They're usually staggered amongst the different floors. So it, it would be not typical for you to live on the same floor with everybody in your seminar, but there probably will be some people from your seminar living on the same floor with you. Um, uh, could Maybe one of us could talk about field trips. We've gotten a couple questions about those, whether people travel with their first year seminars. Uh, I, I can, oh, sorry, Joanne, go ahead. No, go for it. I mean, I said, we, I do go to Ellis Island typically. I've done that a couple of times. We've also taken my first year seminar to the, um, the Tenement Museum on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. It's a really neat space where like each floor of the museum is a different generation of immigrants from sort of 19th century um, German Jewish immigrants or Polish immigrants through sort Sort of mid 19th mid 20th century Cuban immigration so it's kind of a a one-stop shop for all the um sort of 19th and 20th century waves of immigration in the country um but Dave has something to say too uh just I mean not not a whole lot to say about this except that we've taken a, a couple of field trips in our class um one, we went to York to see a, a, an artist named Patterson Hood who was playing in York. He met with us before the show, talk a little bit about his work uh, and the work that he's done with his band. Uh, and we also met Woody Guthrie's granddaughter here in Gettysburg. We walked across the street, went to the Majestic when Arlo Guthrie, who was Woody's son, was playing at the Majestic. Arlo couldn't find the time to meet with us, unfortunately, but his daughter did meet with us. And then we heard we heard stories about Arlo hanging around all night uh, in town talking to people, but unfortunately, he was busy before the show. So those are just a couple of examples, and we're very close to New York City, which would be a great place for us to take a a field trip to to talk about some things that we talk about in our course. If anybody wants to twist my arm and the arms of the other fifteen people in the seminar, I bet you we could get that done. But you you do a whole concert series, right? We do, yes. Yeah, so and we also field try. Trips. There's other. Yeah, stuff. so we do we do reverse field trips. Thank you, Joanne. Yeah, we try to get people to come here. We haven't done it the last two years because of the pandemic. Obviously, uh, two years ago there just was nothing happening in that way. And last year, a lot of a lot of acts weren't weren't touring. Nobody was really out on the road. So we have had people come here and play on campus, and it's a lot of fun. Students help me plan those events and we get to meet with the artists and they spend some time talking about the work that they do. Uh, it, and, and it just ends up being a really powerful experience. So yeah, thanks for mentioning that. It's a, yeah, like a reverse field trip. They come to us, which might be even better. Um, we do a lot of field trips in my class too. Um, and not just in my first year seminar, um, the, I mean, environmental studies were very much about getting out in the field. Um, so in our first year seminars, I think all of them involve a trip to Washington, D.C. Um, in our class, for example, we go down to D.C. and we look at representations of non-human animals in a couple different locations, in um, museum gallery exhibits, in the, um, in the works and representations in the um, National Museum of the American Indian. And then we go to the Smithsonian and we have a little zoo ethnography project where we sort of watch people watching animals in addition to um, seeing what's happening there. Um, my class also does a field trip to a wolf rescue sanctuary. Um, and uh, where else have we gone? Oh, we've uh, visited the um, horse therapy equine, the hippotherapy. Uh, facility here. We get out a lot. Um, so 
the DC is a big, a big draw for, um, for Gettysburg. It's an hour and a half away in the bus. So it's nice to get down for the day. You're all making me feel, uh, like, <laughs> um, in my uh, war seminars, I take students to the army war college where they have a trench exhibit and I make them run around in the trenches. Um, that's pretty much it though. <laughs> They seem to appreciate it, though. They always get a kick out of it. And, uh, students are like, maybe not, Professor. <laughs> <laughs> um, we did have a question as to how students might know which, which seminars do travel and which ones don't. Some of them will have travel or field trip information in the course description or in the additional information section that you might find on the, on the dashboard. Um, but if not, then you, sh you should feel free to reach out to the professor and see... Uh, uh, and see which whether their course does uh, do that. And you should feel free to reach out to the professors of seminars um, as well in general if you have questions about the seminar, about the content or anything like that. Um, one of the questions we've gotten is with the size of these seminars, am I correct in assuming the relationship in them uh, is close, not only between students, but also with professors? What do you all think? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was going to say, I think we would all probably say yes to this one. Uh, and and um, I'll, I'll just give a couple of quick examples of the way that my, I think we are able to create unusually close connections within these seminars. They really are communities. We, I feel closely attached to the students that I teach and love to see them again. You know, I was just talking to a group of them today who dropped by my office who were in the seminar three years ago now who are going to be graduating in two, three, four weeks, whatever it is, getting close to the end here. Um, it's great to, to see them stay together. Those, those folks that visited me today are all living together still, even after all these years. So they, they must have liked each other. Um, and, but, but they also do things together. So we had a run on, the, on WZBT, which is the campus radio station one year. I remember like, a, like 10 or 12 people in the seminar decided they wanted to do radio shows. And so they had it on lockdown there for a year or two. Nobody else could get in because they had all shows lined up themselves, but they maintained a little community around that. And I think uh, that that really, that's a good example of just how, how strong those connections can be. Even through the pandemic, that was the case, which I think was really great. Uh, we went out of our way as a college, I think, to make the first year seminars meaningful, even in spite of the pandemic. And that, you know, we still see the, we're, that, that still bears fruit even a couple of years later, so. Yeah, because of the nature of my seminar, I sometimes have international students who are, you know, interested from hearing and learning about sort of the immigrant experience from um, from a sort of American perspective or learning a sort of historical perspective on that. And I have had some of those students, you know, the first week when you're in the United States or the first couple of weeks when you're in the U.S. are stressful. And I've had some of those students over for dinner. I mean, I think all of us would say the relationship is as close as you want to make it. You know, you don't have to be. Um, super close to your teachers if you don't want to be, but we're, we're here for that um, if and as needed. And I had a student sit in my office here um, from my seminar. The first time she grew up in Vietnam, the first time she ever saw snow was in my office here. And we stopped and had a moment together when she saw snow fall for the first time. So there's some neat experiences that are made possible because of the, the size and the nature of these classes. I would just agree with everything that's been said on that. Um, we definitely, I think we get close to you all too. Um, and as, as my own, uh, as my own son um, gets closer to the age of my first year students, I, you know, I sort of see everybody kind of like him and um, feel very mother hennish <laughs> towards them. But again, I think it's only as, as much as you want, right? Like if you wanna have a closer relationship with your faculty, we're here. If you're more like, I'm doing my own thing, I just kind of want to come to class and I appreciate the community, but like, you know, that's also fine. Um, but I, I do think that that first semester is really special. And um, it's, it's really, it is a real privilege for us as faculty to be part of that experience, I would say. Um, so it goes both ways. It does. And it's, um, it, it, it's interesting because we'll all be sitting at graduation four years after you get here and we will all recognize 
you coming across the skate to say, I, I remember the first day you were on campus or I remember you sitting in my office asking about, you know, whatever courses you were going to take or saying that you want to have three majors and six minors and having to gently say that might not be possible within four years. Right. Uh, but it, it's one of these things that we, you know, we do get to know you well, and then we get to watch you grow over a four year period. And it's a real honor to be able to do that. And then to see you on, on the back end emerge, um, emerge with the Gettysburg college degree. Um, and uh, it's really, it's really a lot of fun for us. Um, so we have a question about, uh, classes that are similar to first year seminars av available later in our time at Gettysburg, uh, since we can only take one seminar, or how is a first year seminar class different than other courses that are taught here? In some ways, the capstone in the major is the partner for the first year seminar. I think, you know, like later when you in your senior year, all majors require a senior seminar or a capstone often which requires a research experience of some sort. And it's again, a small kind of intimate class where you're kind of both integrating everything you've done in your major over the course of your time here. Um, so that's maybe one other place where this kind of course exists, maybe methods courses in some departments, other people may have thoughts. Um, I'll just chime in that the, one thing that hasn't been mentioned through this is the idea of a seminar course. And um, so you'll take lots of different courses while you're a student, and some of them will be smaller than others. And some of them will have more reading than others or more diff you know, different approaches. But I think the capstone definitely is that counterpart. But I, I've definitely taught smaller, more topical seminars that are discussion-based, we're sitting in a circle, and we're sometimes dealing with, with difficult material that we're all kind of trying to wrap our brains around, and we're doing that together, and we, we grow as a community in that way too, and so it's different from the first year seminar because by that point, students are, you know, they kind of know how to do college, as you said, um, but I don't, I, I don't think that it would be accurate to say that only in the first year seminars where you have this sort of focus on community and this kind of intimate environment. I think we have that in a lot of our courses, um, but the first year seminar is special because it's your first semester. Um, but yeah, that capstone on the other end is, is also really special. So I, the two are just, um kind of brief logistical questions. The one has to do with if you have to change your seminar, uh, can you? And the answer to that is yes. So uh, when you select your seminar over the summer, when your seminar is, is selected using the algorithm, um, you can switch then into a different seminar if you'd like at the beginning of the fall semester during the open enrollment period. Uh, you'll have to check to make sure that there's room within the seminar that you want to uh, switch into. Um, but, but, but it is possible to be able to, to shift. And usually at the beginning of the semester, there, there, there are a handful of students that'll shift to a different first year seminar um, because either their thoughts changed about the seminar that they wanted to take or, um, or, or the course wasn't exactly what they thought it was going to be. So yes, you can switch. Another question we had is if you switch seminars, will that affect your housing? And the answer is uh, yes or no. So if it's over the summer before housing selection is made, then we will then endeavor to get you housed with your first year seminar. If you switch, or, or college life will. Um, if you switch though, after the start of the semester, you're already in where your housing is going to be. Uh, but most, most people don't typically switch their seminars. They usually stay in the seminar in which they're in. And occasionally there's this, occasionally there'll be a seminar that we might have to cancel over the summer. That happens very rarely, but sometimes uh, faculty priorities change or sometimes there's something that happens and a faculty member won't be able to offer that seminar. So, um, so that occasionally happens, but it doesn't happen that often. All right, let's have a look and see what else we might have. Um, so some of you have asked questions about specific first year seminars. And for those, for example, the uh, change 
uh, activism course by Professor Dowds. I would recommend that you should feel free to reach out to Professor Dowds uh, um, about the seminar. Um, uh, same thing here. Um, uh, there's a question for Professor Powell for a description of his music seminar, um, what the curriculum might be. You can address a little bit of that, Professor Powell, now, or you could. Uh, you could I can. Us, so. I'll, yeah, I'll just quickly say to the Fonz here who asked me this question, uh, I, would actually, I would actually characterize this as a history seminar in many ways, not so much as a music one. We do use the music to try to understand how, uh, how the past becomes history, how it gets interpreted and then reformed as history and understood as history. So we spend a lot of time actually talking about philosophies of history early in the course. Uh, and then we dig into some other primary source documents. So we, we read, uh, for example, King's letter from Birmingham jail. We watch a film about James Baldwin, which is always extremely powerful. Students are really moved by that. Uh, and, and again, we use this music as a way of filling out, sort of filling in your whatever, whatever you um, may not have necessarily received in your high school education about the 20th century in America. That's really what we're after here. Again, I started as a high school history teacher. And so part of the impetus for making this course for me was how can I take my knowledge of, of what I think should be taught to students, what students need to take into the world in terms of their understanding of the past and of American history and culture and, and frame that as a seminar. That's, that's, that's what I wanted to do with that. So yeah, there is a lot of music, but it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a pretty intense academic course also. While we're winding up, I'll just say quickly, about six weeks ago, a woman emailed me and she said, I saw you last year in one of those first year seminar panels. Can I come to your office? And I have advising questions and I have never met this woman personally and I've not seen her since, but we had a lovely hour in my office talking about her courses for next year. So I think faculty here, the point is, are quite open to helping you <laughs> kind of navigate this first year. You should feel free to reach out to people um, and we will do what we can to help you. Uh, help answer any questions that were answered this evening. Yeah, and I was going to say, Ian, now they want to know your first year seminar as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I am on leave next year, so I will be away. <sighs> uh, well, but shoot. Everyone take, uh, take Professor Powell's, I guess. Come on. <laughs> We've got room. Well, we might. Depends on how soon you sign up. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I'm happy to wrap things up. Um, as Joanne said, I mean, all of these professors um, are happy to address any questions, um, but you all have the list as well, um, either in front of you via a mailer or um, through that link I've sent through the chat now um, of the 40 plus different first year seminars you have to choose from. So you have plenty of time to choose those first year seminars. They're available in your portal now um, if you're a deposited student um, and until the middle of May. And then don't worry, in the middle of May, um, you will still have plenty of time uh, as they shift over to your first year dashboard where you will eventually start the process of choosing your other three courses for the first semester here at Gettysburg. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen once more and thank these wonderful panelists for their time tonight. Um, and also encourage you all to stay connected as you continue to make your uh, mighty college decision. I don't envy any of you, but you're doing a great job attending this program tonight, learning more about Gettysburg College. Um, and we're really excited if you do uh, choose to join this community here. Hopefully you've seen um, you know, how impactful the student and professor relationships are here at Gettysburg College through these four panelists tonight. Um, and thank you again for joining. Congratulations once more. You should be very proud of your, your achievements and accomplishments. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you, my fellow panelists. Yeah. Good thank luck you, with you. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Good luck. Bye. Be in touch with us if you have any questions. Mm -hmm.